The pasticciotto, a barrel vaulted Apulian home in baked good form, where the walls and arched roof of short crust pastry guard within a simple yet elegant pastry cream. And today I get to go to Galatina to eat the original one. The pasticceria Ascalone, to be exact, where it was invented in the 18th century. And I'm also visiting a dream home for sale, a storybook 19th century palace. So excited. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so my dream of having the original pasticciotto is unable to come true today. It's a Monday and they're closed on Mondays. Luckily, there are pastry shops all over the place and I'm gonna get one anyway. Just serve me my food. I got a, a pasticciotto. Brioche alla crema. This is uh, filled with pastry cream. And then a cappuccino. And it is on this sweet note that our visit to Galatina begins. But just when I'm ready to get going, it begins pouring rain. Who says it's always sunny in Puglia? So I have to take refuge. Probably not the worst place to have some time to yourself. <laughs> According to tradition, St. Peter stopped in Galatina on his voyage from Antioch to Rome, hence this beautiful basilica. Galatina is the third city in the province of Lecce by population, with over 25,000 inhabitants, and is located strategically inland at the center of the Salentino Peninsula. Its opulent Baroque architecture reflects the city's ancient wealth, which peaked in the 18th and 19th centuries thanks to the lucrative leather trade. Walking around its streets, you'll be struck by beauty at every corner. Galatina is a city where history is being valued, where the old is in the process of being gracefully restored and integrated into the present. Beauty, restoration, heritage. These are the themes of our visit today. So we have one stop before the house tour, and this is, the house tour will be the, for the senses of the eyes, but this is for the sense of taste. So uh, lunchtime, let's go. And I'm going to Il Fienile, literally the barn or hayloft, in front of the Basilica di Santa Caterina, a gorgeous 14th century church containing the finger of St. Catherine of Alexandria, which, according to legend, was brought to Galatina by a noble crusader who, when visiting her relic at Mount Sinai, kissed her hand and tore her finger away with his teeth. Hmm, there goes my appetite. Anyway, the restaurant occupies the space where pilgrims would park their horses to rest and refuel. Exactly like Gal do. It's been exquisitely renovated to respect its history, and the menu looks amazing. Here, the past meets the present, both in architecture and cuisine. So I've got my first dish. It's orecchiette with tomatoes and cheese, some basil. Mm. This is really delicious. Grazie mille. So this is the cod, which they call bacala similar to the Portuguese bacalhau, and it's it's really good salty with this uh, cream and I think broccoli rabe. It's, it's really, really good. Mm. Okay, so I'm making my way now to the house. I think it's right around the corner there. Oh, there it is. And wow, I can already see this is a really special one. Have a look at this.
This is a palace and it's uh, a really special property at a really amazing price for what it is. The agent was explaining to me that this property was built by the noble Vallone family, one of the most famous of Galatina in the late 19th century. It's 645 square meters, is articulated between two floors, the ground and the top floor, and the asking price is 350,000 euros, very negotiable. Let's have a look. So we enter in through the main entrance on the ground floor. Now, like I mentioned, the building being sold consists of this ground floor and the top floor. And this bottom floor, which we didn't have time or the possibility to see, is actually uh, consists of 10 rooms, all with barrel vaulted or star vaulted ceilings separated in four different apartments. It's a big space, so I'll throw a floor plan on the screen here with our typical tarallo to see where we are. And as we head up the stairs, um, I did want to give you an idea of the potential of this property once it's really fully renovated and back in its former glory. This is an example of an aristocratic palace uh, fully renovated and turned into a deluxe uh, bed and breakfast. This, um, I love this bathroom. The style is very respectful of the artistic touches of the original building. So the affrescos begin in the stairs themselves. These are hand painted on either side of the guardrails. And uh, as we enter into the atrium here, um, I'll just note that the building is kind of divided into two sides, the left and the right. The left is that section that we saw from the street outside with the balcony, and the right, the further living quarters, along with the kitchen area. But uh, we'll start off with the side with the balcony. Just have a look at these details. You do have, so this atrium, this will be where you're entering in, comes with that large closet space in the back, which is really nice. All of the sections of this house have star vaulted ceilings or barrel vaulted ceilings. Most of them are frescoed by hand and haven't been touched. This building really is a, ti uh, a time capsule. The floors themselves are also original. Even this wallpaper, which we'll see in this kind of secondary walk-in closet room, which is what I imagine it was originally. This is wallpaper, I think, from the late 19th century. It might have to go, but it is still a really interesting piece. So I can imagine this section of the house being a, a large suite, perhaps, for a B and b with two big rooms, with that side room that we we're coming from as you know a deluxe bathroom. That's a possibility. But this room is definitely the centerpiece, I think, of this apartment with the balcony view and with, I think, the most elaborate a fresco on the ceiling out of all of the other divisions. So this is the benefit of a house which has not really been touched or lived in. No renovations have taken place, so it hasn't been denatured from its original charm. So we'll head back towards that atrium that we came in from and we'll check out the other side of the house. There are the stairs again, just to kind of orient you to where we are. And this brings up into a room with a nice light well on the ceiling. It's really a gorgeous touch. Um, and it's divided into three different sections that you can go to the right, this right wall, this front wall, and the left wall, which can be different divisions, different bedrooms, you can really uh, be flexible with how you want to renovate it. But moving to the left, this was the traditional kitchen cooking area for the service people who would live downstairs in the Noble Palace. It hasn't been renovated. This perhaps could be the dining room with this kitchen in the back, which still contains, this is, this is great, the original uh, wooden stove and ovens that were here since the beginning. Charming. I, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't take these out when renovating. I would clean them up, leave them there, uh, even if it were just for decoration. There's plenty of space in the kitchen to put in, you know, modern appliances. And this perhaps could be the dining room. You do have a courtyard that you can see from the back, 
And that door to the right leads up to the terraces. Both of these lead down to apartments downstairs. We'll head back here into this area and we'll go to these, I'd say living quarters to the left now. So these are two separate rooms, which perhaps can be a different, a two room suite. This one with uh, a terrace as well. Both very spacious. It can be a sort of suite with a living room plus a bedroom on the other side or even an extremely large bathroom or kind of spa area. That is something that is missing in this house. There's no designated bathroom areas. And that's because when it was built, they used outhouses. So there are the terraces outside. There's one that we didn't go to, which essentially had an outhouse on it. So you'll, you would have to kind of choose, designate an area to be your bathroom. And then this is that other living space. This has a barrel vaulted ceiling. Also the cementine, these are the original tile floors. Gorgeous, These you polish them up and they'll look absolutely stunning. And we'll head into the other division here. Another star vaulted ceiling with really splendid handmade of frescoes. Really spacious, this has a view of the side street from this little balcony. So just to note, you obviously do have to modernize this building with heating, with new, new pipes, everything having to do with electricity as well. And we'll uh, have a quick look at the terraces upstairs. It's obvious it's a big apartment, so you have a lot of terrace space as well. If you're renovating it to be a kind of deluxe noble B and B, uh, you can go all out with the terrace space as well. You can obviously put out chairs, umbrellas, some plants, but even take it a step further if you're going for the luxury uh, segment and install perhaps even something like a small jacuzzi, uh, separate the terrace into th different sections, and include maybe um, a small bar area. The options are really limited to your imagination. And of course, the, um, the permits that you would need to get from the town if you're going to do something uh, a bit more elaborate. Anyways, you can kind of see there in front, that's the main church out there in the back that we uh, started our little Galatina adventure from. And all of these roofs are ours. It's kind of like a a labyrinth with different levels on top of a stone castle. But now I'm gonna head out and head downstairs because I did wanna show you the entrances from the street to the ground floor apartments at least, just so you have an idea of what the house looks like all from the outside. You can see that it is built along the angle of these two streets uh, and wraps all around this street into the street in the back as well. If you look up, those are the windows belonging to the apartment that we saw upstairs. And this number two and number four are entrances. This is a section now of the house here in the corner, which was sold and renovated already. It's also the possibility to buy this as well. Uh, it is fully renovated and is a B&B and &B as well. It was part of the original structure. And after this series of houses, our doors begin again here. So these are the separate entrances. This number 10, I think number eight and number six. So that was today's visit. I hope it inspired your imagination as it did mine. This is a place which really deserves an owner who wants to breathe back into the former glorious life that this house uh, once had. So like, subscribe. If you have any suggestions about places that I could visit or things that you'd like me to uh, show, uh, type below. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.